OK, so we now have a program that, whoa, so exciting, moves the ball in a straight line. Now let's add a bit more physics. Let's add some gravity. I um, don't think we need that printing anymore. I was just there to help check what was going on. How are we going to do gravity? Well, we're going to need to define some variables first. Let's call it set up gravity. Let's define g as a vector, because gravity has a direction. So it's a vector, and it's in the minus y direction, so 0, minus 9.8, 0. And let's give our ball some mass, let's say 1 kilogram. Right, so how are we going to do this? Well, what we're doing down here is we're just saying that the ball's position at the end of the time step is equal to the ball's position at the beginning of the time step times the ball's velocity. But the velocity isn't changing. But what gravity is going to do is it's going to change the velocity. So what we need to do is put in before here something that updates the velocity. So how are we going to update the velocity? Well, if something has a particular velocity at time t, what we want to know is what's its velocity going to be at time t plus this little dt. In this case, that's going to be very straightforward because it's just accelerating down with gravity. So if gravity is accelerating at 9.8 meters per second down, then if the time step was one second, then you'd subtract 9.8 from its velocity. So what we can do is we can have ball dot val equals ball dot val plus g times the time step. So what that's going to do is it's going to take g, 9.8 downwards, multiplied by the time step, 0.01 in this case, and that's going to be the change in velocity you're going to get in 0.01 of a second. And it adds that as a vector to the ball's velocity. OK, let's check that it works by um, printing. Um, let's let's um, print ball.val. Now notice that the second line here is now no longer precisely accurate. So we just said the ball position at the end is the ball position at the beginning plus the velocity, but the velocity is now going to be changing. So to do it properly, we'd have to be a bit complicated because the velocity is going to be different at the beginning and end of the time step. So we could use something like s equals ut plus half a t squared to get it more accurate. Now that would be fine here, but in fact if you make the time step really small, it makes almost no difference. And that's not going to work when we start putting drag in and other things where the velocity is changing but not at a steady rate. Um, or it might be the drag is in one direction and the g is in another, and they're both going to change during the time step. So let's keep it something very simple. It's not precisely accurate in this case, but it's, if the time step is really small, it's pretty damn good. Um, and let's see what happens. So let's try running this. OK. Um, so what happened? We can look at the... This is the... Um, printing the velocity. And what happens is the velocity gets very negative, and it falls through the ground and falls way down here. Of course, it'll fall through the ground because the computer only does what we told it to do, and we didn't tell it anything along the lines of, if hit ground, then stop. So that's not physics we've put in. The only physics in this is the physics that we put in. Other than that, it seems to be behaving quite properly. What I might be tempted to do is give it more of a sideways starting velocity so we can see what's going on. So maybe they'll make the velocity like 3 meters per second sideways. Um, the other thing I'm going to change is instead of running for 3 seconds, I'm going to run for as long as the height is above the ground. So the height is ball.pos, but that's a vector, uh, and it's the y component. So ball.pos.y will look up ball, vel, and x, y, z, the middle component here for the... And the ground is at minus 3, so as long as that is 
greater than minus 3, it should keep running. So what this should now do is, instead of running for 3 seconds, it'll run until the height is no longer more than minus 3. So that means it should stop on the ground. I hope. Let's see what happens. OK, well, that's looking pretty good. So it's printing out the velocity. So at the time it hit the ground, the velocity is minus 11.27. The x component remains constant, like it's supposed to do for projectile motion. The z component doesn't change. So that's all looking sensible. It sank into the ground a bit. Um, I guess that's um, it's waiting until this position, which is the center of the ball, reaches minus 3. So instead of making it minus 3, we make it minus 3 plus ball dot radius, which is 0 0.5. Now it should wait till it lands on the surface. Let's try that. Okay, that's looking good. Still not quite the surface because this, this ground that we made has a bit of thickness, but I think that's looking a bit more realistic. Okay, so we're doing well here. Um, we're putting up the ball velocity all the time. We could say... Um, Vel, can I spell velocity equals, and we could also print out the just to make it clear what's happening, and that will be ball dot pause. So now, if we run this. And it gives us just the final velocity and just the final position. Uh, so it's gone 2.59 to minus 2.59. And because these two print commands are not in the loop, they're not indented, they're not out here in the, with white space in front of them, they're right at the edge here, it only prints them out once when we get to the end of the loop. So that's all looking good. We have now managed to actually recreate projectile motion. Yay!